Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're going to do something that we've been waiting to learn for ages and I'm really excited to talk about it and uh, try it off. So we're going to look at helicopter auto rotation today. So we'll start in some Hueys here uh, just to explain the basics. It's just a good all-round chopper to work with and then maybe we'll later all we'll go into something heavier and have a look. So what is auto rotation? So first of all, I mean my basic idea of auto rotation is if the helicopter loses power in its engine for whatever reason it gets shot runs out of fuel it overheats then it's the ability to still have the rotors generating lift and come down for an emergency landing would you agree with that guys it doesn't actually need to be the the engine that's out it can also be the drive shaft for example but yes in principle you do use your downward movement uh, to create airflow over the rotor blades uh, to create lift yes and to keep them Roger. And just the way my brain works in this kind of thing, I have to understand the, just the elementary physics of, of, of how this is going to work. So when we're up in the air, obviously we've got gravity pulling us down, a big force, several tons uh, of force, if you like. And so to combat that, we've got to burn our gasoline, or aviation fuel, and use the chemical energy to spin the rotor blades, which is going to create lift, which is going to counteract the, uh, the weight of the helicopter. Now, when our chemical energy is no longer there to be burnt you know because the engine's out of order which is what we're going to do by the way to turn our engine off we're going to use this button here which is the fuel cutoff then we still have to find a way of creating a force an upwards lift force and the way we're going to do that is we're going to tilt our, uh, our helicopters downwards we're going to dive downwards we're going to take our collective off and that is going to allow the rotors to spin freely and we're going to use the downwards uh, speed airspeed of the aircraft to build up s inertial inertia and you know spinning speed of the rotor blades to get inertial energy in those rotor blades which will give us a few seconds of lift at the end of our descent to be able to land what do you think about that guys you can actually create lift the entire way down and actually glide it a good bit nowhere near as far as you could glide a fixed wing but mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you do you you do use basically a potential energy of your altitude to turn into kinetic energy for your rotor blades, which you then you know turn into lift. Roger. Okay. Um, now we've got four different aircraft uh, rotaries in DCS, and we've got an MI eight, uh, an MI twenty four coming soon. Do we think the theory is going to be the same for all of those aircraft? Yes. Right. So what we're going to do in the way of doing this we're going to go and get up to altitude uh, the altitude that we're going to get up doesn't really matter you know we've sh we've done this from a couple of hundred feet but to um, elongate the time that we're doing this i'm going to go up to a good 2,000 feet just so we've got lots of time to talk about it the first thing we're going to do is we're going to artificially cut turn our engine off and we're going to do that by pressing this thing here which is the fuel cutoff and then we're going to come into action and the first thing we do is we need to take our collective all the way down and my understanding is for that is it because it takes resistance of the spinning of the rotor do we agree with that yes so it allows the rotor to spin more freely and the next thing we're going to do is point our nose down to the ground and it's terrifying it really is as you'll see and the reason is because in a helicopter that's how we need to build up forward speed and as well as that we do need to build up forward speed and reduce our altitude to for the exchange of potential and kinetic energy uh, then it's going to be a balancing act we've got a look at our rotor speed which is this needle here and we want to try and keep the rotor speed in the green ideally would you say in the green or near the lower end of the green star uh, if you want to get uh, your ideal glide range it's towards the lower end of the green according to the FAA rotorcraft manual Roger I mean for me I'm, I'm the worst helicopter pilot here so I, all I'm going to try and do is just keep this inner needle in the green here and the way I do that is if the rotor is starting to spin too fast remember we've got no collective on at this point so it's a free spinning rotor um, then this needle will go upwards and if we get towards the red I'm going to increase the collective to put some resistance on the rotor and to lower the rotor speed as well as that if I've got too much collective on then there's too high resistance on the rotor this needle will get too low if we come out of the green here we will lose all lift and we will sink like a stone so then I need to reduce the collective to put it back into the green and my uh, objective of today is to keep that rotor that needle in the green at all times that means we're generating lift okay uh, that's Until the very end it is yeah, uh, if yeah. you're just doing your very last touchdown flare then you can allow the rotors to drop the lift Roger. you'll probably need to 
and that brings us and that is our glide slope okay that's our glide and I my glide will be a quite aggressive uh, glide if you've got more confidence like these two boys you'll see a probably a, a, a more like a an aircraft like a, a fixed wing glide you know coming down at about 20 or 30 degrees uh, then when we come in for the landing we do our flare and we need a lot of movement in our cyclic at that point so I don't know if we've decided whether we get rid of trim or not but there's an argument to say that we need to reset our trim here um, so the reset the trim is, is, is one of the first things to do with, as, Roger. as you variance engine failure Roger a reason that gives, then that gives you the, the, the maximum amount of range on your cyclic yeah and that makes sense because you do need loads of range on the cyclic during the flare and um, now the reason I didn't mention that earlier is because I personally don't fly with the trim so um, it's not something I need to worry about but most of you will be flying with your trim and so resetting your cy recycling trim is going to be important I wouldn't call the end procedure when you're coming down flare as such I would just come down sort of as gently as you can I think the danger of flaring oh. is I think Stahl said earlier you end up bashing your tail rotor Roger. on the ground you do actually need to flare to, be... to arrest your horizontal movement but it is before um, you touch down I so, you, so you do, so you do at, at, at a low altitude. You do a flare to slow yourself down, and then before you touch down, you do need to level out again. Yes, I can. I'll go with that. But there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a forward skid. Roger. Uh, there isn't. But you know, if if the recommended speed to gain as much, you know, to cover as much distance as possible is 50 to 60 knots, that's a very, very high touchdown. Roger, and that's a good point. Uh, Charles brought up there. It's not just uh, this glide slope. It's not just to get you on the ground. It's to get you to your destination. Um, so if we're out over the sea, well, we don't want to land in the sea. We want to get ourselves enough of a glide slope to be able to um, travel to the island, which is why we're doing this over the sea. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cut our fuel out to sea and glide down to the island. Did you just say FAA is about 50 to 60 knots for that purpose, Star? Well, yeah, it's the most efficient thing, so that's basically low descent rate and far distance you'll cover. I mean, it's still not a very uh, a very flat slope. Uh, you'll still come down pretty steeply. You're not going to get very far with that. But I want you to know... I, I, I personally don't think you'll be able to use an auto-rotate to get yourself back to land if you're at sea. No, you're right. Oh, well, but, but I mean, if you're purely... Just, if you're just a little yeah. bit off the coast yeah but if you're like and I'd, you know uh, and i'd sooner have 60 50 60 knots forward speed than 50 60 knots vertical speed roger so even if i even if i land at 60 knots i'll be happy with that roger uh, so these guys are probably going to be uh, looking at their speedos and keeping that range i probably won't because i'm just trying to try to keep the bird in the air to be honest so it's got some different skill ranges so that explains and then anything uh, the the hardest bit of this is the final touchdown we've had real trouble with that uh, does anyone want to explain why that touchdown is so hard and what we should be trying to do well, the thing is with the final touchdown is you're running out of out of speed uh to keep your rotor spinning so what you're working with at that point is only the inertia uh, of your rotor blades so it's also going to depend from helicopter to helicopter the heavier the rotor blade system is the more inertia the longer it's going to keep spinning and that actually makes it easier to land in the end uh, but when you're doing a final touchdown, you're only running off that inertia and you need to slow it down and touch down gently with that. Camera? Uh, one, one risk you're running, uh, as we've mentioned before, if you if you flare too hard is tail strike, so that's a dangerous thing you have to be careful mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Also, the moment you touch down, you want to put as much weight uh, onto, your, onto your skids or wheels if you have those as possible, so you stop quicker. Uh, so what you do is you drop your collective immediately and you should not use your cyclic uh, to arrest your ground movement otherwise you can actually hit your tail boom with your rotor blades yes, yeah. and then also avoid using your rudder keep it keep it straight Generally, actually when you're touching down you know you don't want to come in like skidding sideways you don't want to do a yeah. power slide on the helicopter because that's just you know dynamic rollover waiting to happen okay um and yeah and i'll just put that into into my concern as well so so if we follow my cursor here, we're coming down on this glide slope roughly. And what we do in, if I've got an engine, is I kind of um, flare before I hit the ground and I just, you know, uh, I ho almost hover it in the air and then very slowly touch down. Now you can't do that with auto rotation because if you stop that forward and downwards motion, we run out of inertia very quickly in the rotor blades and the last few feet we just sink. And that's probably what we'll see me doing because it's a you know, bad habit. Um, uh, because we've got a very finite amount of energy 
in that uh, in that in that rotor. So it has to be done in quite a smooth, fairly fast action, as you see from the boys. Okay, boys. What we're going to do first of all is we're all going to take off. We're going to head out to sea together, just a few hundred feet out. If we got up to two thousand feet, um, just to give the people at home, you know, lots of time to see me doing this, I'll go down first. Then we'll send one of you two down. Then we'll send the next of you two down, and then we'll have a chat once we're on the ground, shall we? I have one more thing to add in regards to the first things you do. Um, depending on the helicopter, you may not necessarily at the speed you currently have uh, when you lose your engine power. You may not want to nose down very harshly. I mean, at the Huey, you find it's almost necessary. In the MI-8, for example, you can almost keep it level the entire time, actually. Um, and if you're watching your auto RPM, you will notice as long as you're nosing down a lot, you actually won't be able to get your rotor RPM up only once you put your uh, rotor blades perpendicular to the direction you're basically falling in then you're gonna gain your rotor RPM back rotor. Um, so don't you know just keep dropping and dropping because you're not getting rotor RPM but instead you know start pulling your nose up once you actually have some downward velocity Roger noted yeah I tend to dive like that but yeah I see what you mean okay boys so I'll lead us out to the basically the way that you're facing Camera next. And super gap. For those watching, you can see my controls at the top left. Mainly, the most important thing is the cyclic, which is this one I'm wobbling now. Okay, so I'm not going to be using trim today, because we're going to do it from a more or less sandsill or a very slow speed, um, just because of this particular example. But often you'll be doing this from moving with trim on. So it's just, uh, just note that difference. So we're together now, we're at 2,000 feet or near as. I'm going to do the first order rotation. It's going to be quite aggressive. So watch my rotor RPM and my airspeed. I'm not going to watch the altimeter. We can do everything visually. How you do this at night, I have no idea. So, right, I'm going, guys, don't go until I tell you to. Cap is fuel cut collective down, nose down. Watching the rotor, watching the rotor speed, watching the rotor speed. Rotor speed's good. Too much rotor speed. Perfect. This looks pretty terrifying. Having very little control than it is. Looks like you've got it. I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna panic. Forward momentum. Don't use that energy, don't use that energy. Hover above the ground. Rudder. Yes! Woohoo! Supercap auto rotation, extreme victor! <laughs> How about that? No fuel, boys. No fuel, no chemical energy. Right, I'm going to come and find one of you. Okay, Charlie Wally, when you're ready, cut your fuel and uh, good luck, sir. Drink. Chemical energy's gone. Trading potential energy now, getting airspeed in the bird, which will turn those rotors. Keeping his rotor rotation in the green. Now it's e it's possible to over rotate those rotors and have them literally fly off the plane. So you've got to keep that that speed in the green. He's going to start arresting his knots now. Getting his ideal glide slope. It's good. It's good. Yeah! Oh! Just clipped it on you. Just clipped it on you. Uh, a little bit too fast on the touch on there. Oh, See, that's what you should play. <laughs> that's um, the important thing is we've got two surviving crews. Right. You ready, camera? Ready. Off you toot. Effective down. Free those rub blades up. Oh, aggressive. Aggressive. Look how aggressive camera is. Okay. It's trading now. It's a constant conservation of energy balance in that here. He's going for the skids. He's got it. He's broken a skid, but he's fine. He's um, so that's different. It shows different ways of doing it. I did a almost a kind of a traditional helicopter landing there with a bit, bit of feathering at the end, and I just conserved the energy. 
So, did the same, but he just had a bit of a rough landing. And um, uh, Cameras was different. He kind of dive-bombed the ground and then kind of um, released at the very last moment. So I guess there's different ways of doing it. And you can see the different amount of distance that we travelled. Uh, Cap travelled the most, had the most flair. Style a little bit less. And Camera was kind of much more aggressive down and then pull up. Uh, so Camera, you probably had more inertia um, uh, to use in your propellers, uh, but you didn't really need well, it. Well, I mean, there's only it. so much inertia you're going to get because, you know, there's only so much speed, speed the yeah. So when you're doing, when you're coming down very steeply and very quickly, it's going to be actually more difficult to arrest that, and you get less glide range. So generally speaking, you do probably want to do it a bit and you know, gentler. Roger, um, what should we do? MIA or push it? anything you want to do, guys? Yeah, I've never done an MIA. Okay, we're going to try the MIA now. We've had a little talk about this. And what we've got in the MIA is a massive rotor up there compared to um, the Huey, and that means a massive inertial momentum up there and lots of stored energy in that rotor so in theory in theory we might find this a bit easier we're just gonna have to see how it goes so caps getting into position so what I'm gonna do to cut the engine is I'm gonna use the engine cutoffs here and here that's right uh, where's it boys right control page up page control down. page up and page down yeah Roger. and a good trick we've always learned in the MI8 remember is turn the fan on this tells you what your generator is doing and that's very important. So what we're going to do is we'll cut the engine. We'll see that the generator will die at that point, and the fan will cease to function. And then as we get into our, uh, we start trading our potential energy for kinetic. We get the rotor spinning again. We will then the the generator, the engine will be dead, but the generator will come back online. And uh, that's a good little tool to use there in terms of rotor RPM. We've got an RPM here. We're going to keep it mm, 80 to 90 ish, something like that during the uh, free fall phase or the whole sorry, or rotation phase airspeed here although i'm probably not going to worry too much about that it's the least of my worries um, to keep in mind the uh, the generator will go offline at uh, below 84 percent of rpm if i recall correctly roger noted so i want ideally i want to keep that uh, um, uh, fan spinning that's my little um trick well i'm about to approach 800 meters and you're about my altitude right, so. about 2000 feet right cap's going for it first guys so i'm gonna cut my engines stand by one, two, engines cut, forward, cyclic off. Right, so I want to get my rotor speed up above 84%. There we go, we've got the fan spinning. And now back we go. Collective on, collective off. You have to brake for a moment so your parking brakes off. Hang on, I can't concentrate now, stop. I've got to think. Just, just use your wheel brake for a sec. Roger, wheel brake. Collective up. Too much rotor speed. Good. And it, I, one thing I can feel is it retains its energy a lot more than the Huey. The Huey would have died bomb by now. If anything, I've got too much energy right Make now. Make sure you land straight, otherwise you're going to roll over yeah, a little bit tilted. That. Roger, leveling out. Ah, yes! I did it, guys! That is one landed MIA. Not bad for a second go. Let me just... Um, and you can see the engine's off still and the generator's off and whatnot. Those uh, rotors will keep spinning for a while because uh, they've got plenty of um, uh, rotational energy in them. Right. Woo! Pretty sexy. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to find... Dali Wali, when you're ready, um, you can do it. Maybe at the end of the runway. Just getting it turned around. Hold well on. Remember, this thing glides for ages compared to the QE, so we've actually got a problem with running out of runway at this point. Cut. Dango star. Oh, 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 you cut your foot! Save it! That's what Save it! Can't. No, no rotor. <laughs> Clipped it. That's what happens when you pull too hard. Right. That's why you don't want to. That's why you don't want to dive too much. Oh, it was all for the demonstration cap. This isn't going to end well, Stahl. I'm not going to lie. This isn't going to end well for you. All the Stahl fans out there! Ooh. You can cut that, right? <laughs> of course I'll cut that, Stahl. Yeah, uh, that's a good note, boys. Don't do a Huey in this. If you dive right down, you'll just chop your... You just don't need to. Um, you can just glide down at 30 degrees all the way. Okay, camera engine's off. First time I've ever done this. You'll be fine, you're a natural helicopter pilot. 
Just it's actually easier than the Huey. Just don't it drop is, it down. It is. It is. You don't need to be as aggressive with this Huey. That's the main thing to note. He's got it. He's frigging got it, boys. He's got it. Look at that auto rotation. Ooh, losing oh, it. Oh, no! Losing it. Camera! He's there, he's there. Collective, 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 collective. Okay. <laughs> That's a few spinal compression fractures, but that is a landed <laughs> MI8. Look at Cap. Two landings out of two. Big sexy. Look, my, just to give you an idea of how much energy is in that rotor, my rotor is still spinning. My drive train is still going. Still thing just nicely lubricated. Okay, we've got an auto rotation from Star. Right, no more choppy choppy, nice and gentle. More energy in that thing you can never need. Almost like cheating in the MIA. Watch that fucking, watch that. Oh, you got it. Beautiful. On a star. Right. Um, I mean, we don't need to show the other helicopters. They're all the same. All helicopters seem to work the same, don't they? Are you going for another one, camera? Right, quickly turn it off. Auto rotate, gazelle. Now, this has got very little momentum in this rotor, so you're going to have to be aggressive with this as fuck. Oh, this, is, this is interesting. Wow, that is hard. That's interesting. That's weird. Did you take that's the collective off? Very, very different. Yeah, and that's the problem. It's, it's going to be the problem with that, isn't it? It's the polar opposite to the MI8. Uh, honestly, I didn't check my RPMs properly right now. It was all... Coming into land, Cap. Coming into land. Okay, camera. Right, loads of energy. Just keep it non-aggressive. Hey, look at that! Literally landed like an aeroplane. I've never seen anyone do that before, camera. That was really good. How are you going to stop, though? And don't say crash into cap. Of course he's going to. Well done. Right, Charles having one more go in the gazelle. And then, um, I think we'll call it after that. I just don't think it's got any, um... Oh, you're doing it now? Oh, that's near enough. Right, so what did that feel like? Just just a mini version of the Huey, or...? I think it was slightly cheated because I don't think I put my fuel lever down all the way, only halfway. Fuck. <laughs> Off you go. Cap, why don't you go multiplayer and join him? Oh, fucking no, it just bugs, it doesn't work. Yeah, you may not be able to control anything, but you'd be able to be in there and see him do it. Oh, fuck, yeah, I can. Um, hang on, Stalin, coming. Don't do it yet. Fuck, so he fucking does it. Just got fucking it. German. <laughs> right, here we go. You're sinking. You're not diving. You've got to dive more aggressively in this thing, Stalin. This is a this helicopter. Is this, is a, weird. this is a camera thing. You're just not getting this that is, speed up. This is really weird. I don't know how to... I'm gonna try the I mean, first of all, the fucking RPM gauge is tiny, so I was struggling to find it when I'm looking for it. I, I, can, I can hear what's going wrong. I can hear that you're not getting enough airspeed. Okay, I'll give it a go. Oh, fucking, here we go. All right, fucking, here we go, then I'll get in the fucking helicopter. <laughs> you know, rather than just doing a shawl, Cap's gonna think about this. We've got a tiny little chopper, hardly, you know, like a radio control chopper. That means we've got very little inertia in those blades. They are gonna. We have to work to get those blades going. That means a steep dive, lots of airspeed, lots of rotor speed. Well, actually, that means you have to do less work to keep them going, and because I don't you know, think it's lighter. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll go with that. But, what I'm saying is, Star, is that they're not going to retain their their energy as much from the That's initial cutoff. Um, so I still think... I still think I'm going to have to be aggressive with this, and that's what I've been watching you do. So, I'm about to go. Hold on. Now, people watching at home, this may be a little bit ugly and a bit aggressive, and I haven't flown this in a while. Excuses all made. Hey, watch this. How do you. Oh, fuck. This is absolutely impossible to glide this thing. It's not. 
Cap's gonna don't, do it. Watch this. Don't, don't do it over water. I don't need to. I'm doing it fine, guys. Surprise, surprise. Stoll's got it wrong. Look. I'm flying it like an fucking aeroplane. Coming for landing. You got, you got any of the autopilots on? You just need to do what I said, Stoll. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to get a plenty of the muck muck in. You've got to get yourself dirty. Cap landed. Perfect. Now you're going to do it. Uh, it's well, just do it, boys. Just fucking do it. You've got to, got to think of that. Think see, 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 Cap. I think it's just you know, camera and me just can't, can't, can't wrap before. our brain around the bullshit flight model. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's that's why that's all Cap, Cap territory. You're not thinking. You're not thinking right. Mm -hmm. so you got to dive Over down and listen, mm -hmm. listen to that rotor, and you'll hear when she's generating lift. All right. So don't do a stall like. Glide in at 20 degrees, that doesn't work. You gotta fucking dive and get 100 knots in the bird. Stoll, when you're ready, fucking dip that thing down and bolt for the ground. Get all the speed. And don't pull out of it. Still got no rotor speed. Yeah, Here, he's coming back now, it's coming back. Don't pull out, don't pull out, don't pull out, don't pull out, you're gonna lose it. A little bit of rotor speed. Gotta drive it in like a jet. Uh, lost it. Funk Monker. Look, watch <laughs> camera, camera and that's out of. Camera knows how to charge at the ground. Where's he gone? Okay, he doesn't. He's dead. I'm just thing is, though, you need to. Okay, well, guys, I'm gonna end the video there because um, we could be all day, but it is possible in a gazelle. Um, can we now line up, please, in all three aircraft together for a photo? Free bakers. Okay, guys, and well done as ever. And we're gonna. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> oh, you're going over camera. Thump. He just couldn't wait. Just couldn't Went wait. Went in dry. Went in Rome, men. Went in Rome. All right, boys. I'll uh, see you in a bit.